it's Mike with Utastic. I'm here at RailsConf 2014. I'm sitting here with, or standing here with uh, Obi Fernandez, who led a panel on the future of Rails jobs. Uh, thank you for taking the time to, to speak with me. Uh, your panel, what 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 do you mean by the future of Rails jobs, and, and who was on the panel? Oh, sure. Um, well, uh, Alan Grant, the co-founder of Hired, <laughs> was one of the platinum sponsors, uh, sponsored the, the panel. Okay. Uh, he's a friend of mine, and, and we talked about what we could contribute to the conference, and it seemed like a good idea, yeah. you know, given the amount of people that certainly would be here looking for jobs or looking to hire people, to have a, a discussion, you know, kind of a frank discussion about what is the future of our industry, you know, right. of our job market, and where is it going? So, in addition to Alan, I invited Jeff Casimir, who uh, has been involved in a lot of training initiatives, and his, his latest thing is uh, Turing School. Turing School? Okay. Yeah. He's a J3 on? J3 on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, I invited Corey Haynes, who's like legendary uh, and, you know, helps to train people in, in software craftsmanship yeah. all around the world. The Global Day of, of Code Retreat. Yeah, Code like Retreat. Um, I thought he would be a useful addition given how much uh, talk there's been about TDD. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, and, it's and been a hot topic. Stuff like that. And, uh, and he, you know, he also uh, trains up a lot of people and he's CTO of a local company in Chicago. And uh, Chad Pytel, who's a, a friend and, and a fellow author in the Addison Wesley Pro Ruby series, and he runs Thoughtbot and hires yeah. people and does apprenticeship. So uh, I thought between the you know the 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 bunch, we would have some good perspectives yeah. on where this market's going. And you also have a history with the, the Rails Waybook series. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm editor of the Addison Wesley Pro Ruby series. Um, my latest book, The Rails Four Way, is coming out in print in a couple of weeks. It's uh, out as a beta book on LeanPub. Okay. Um, you know. Yeah, so I mean, that's 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 a lot of people who've been involved with the with the Ruby and Rails. Community. Yeah, definitely. And I, you know, I, I used to I used to own Hash Rocket. <laughs> uh, sold it a few years ago, but there, you know. We we had uh, thirty five people plus. Yeah, uh, and then in Chicago, yeah, Miami, exactly, yeah, and Jacksonville. So, so sorry, with a lot of a lot of experience hiring, um, and and you know most of us are old timers in the the Ruby and Rails world. So, um, you know, as we're coming up on on nine ten years, like. It's a good time to look and see, okay, where are we at? And that was yeah. one of the big topics. So were, what were some of the, the uh, um, lessons or what were kind of uh, materialized during the panel? Um, it was it was interesting to hear um, the panelists talk about where um, where they see the most expansion. And that, that would, of course, be kind of like on the junior end. Right. There's a lot of folks pouring into these training programs. Uh, there's a lot of folks coming out of that and, and getting hired into shops where you know we, we hope that they're going to get um, adequate mentoring and, and and be able to work with, with folks that have more experience and, and be able to to get their skills um, up to where they need to be because uh, and some of them are, are having you know anywhere from a few weeks of training to a few months of, of, right. of hands-on training and we had some back and forth about you know kind of what what do you need you know to, to crack into to the industry so what was overall the theme positive towards this 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 trend or was it more of a kind of like I think it was I think it was I think it was positive with some notes of caution sounded you know and, and some some notes of wanting uh, those of us in a position to exercise leadership to, to make sure that this doesn't become a glut not in the sense of driving down wages but in the sense of um, you know potentially affecting negatively affecting the quality level of projects you know resulting in more rescues needed and things like that that was really Really, the only um, you know kind of negative area of conversation. We also talked about you know how, how much do freelancers make and and how much do you know to regular hires make and how do you hire them and, and advice for getting noticed by employers and things like that right. came up as well. And I mean, I also wonder if there's the risk of association of. If, if a whole bunch of uh, you know, hundreds of or thousands of, of newbie developers are, are coming out and they know Ruby on Rails and they go into a project and then you know, if the project manager doesn't stand that they're just juniors, there, there's this, a bad name for Ruby on Rails and maybe developing an aversion to it just because of a, a false signal? Yeah, I don't know. I, th there's a sense that that could happen, but... <laughs> You know, I, I, I have a feeling that a lot of these uh, schools and training programs that, that 
you know, they're helping with the placement. They're pretty active. It's something that, right. you know, that, that Jeff has definitely spoken to me personally about, but came up a little bit in the panel. Um, where they, they're setting expectations, you know, correctly. But for the folks that are getting into it, you know, there just seems to be no limit to the demand. Right. You know, so a lot of these folks are coming out of these programs and getting hired at, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars. Oh, you know, depending, pretty, yeah. depending on the market that you're going into. Yeah, and depending on where they're coming from, that could be a, a huge bump. I know one person I, I mentored was went from twenty thousand dollars to somewhere in that range. And yeah. It's like you can have a dramatic impact on their life, on a person's lives. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we also talked about, you know, the, the inverse of that, which is when, when you do have experience mm -hmm. and you start making, you know, into the six figures, how it, how it ramps off, mm -hmm. you know, we, we mentioned that we, we don't know too many people who, who as employees in rails jobs are making like 200,000 or more. Right. Um, and how it's interesting that, that, that space between a hundred and 200, mm -hmm. the, the thousands tend to lose significance. Right. So just because of employers offering say 150 versus 130 right it it doesn't make that much of a difference if the culture and other softer factors are, are not there and and one of the things that i like about hired and, and one of the reasons that that i like alan and what he's doing there is that they get the money discussion out of the way first so that the employee can can focus on the other issues yeah isn't hired kind of where they have a like a uh, a tier you have to go through a certain amount of criteria to even they curate the yeah. you know the, you you can sign up for hired but basically they curate who, who they have on there to, to set a minimum bar and then the employers uh, you know decide who they want to pursue but they have to put the terms up front right you know so at that point um if I'm looking for a job, my understanding is that I, I can decide who has met my terms right off the bat right. so that I don't go through a long interview process and then get to the stage where they make me an offer and it's like, oh, I can't work for yeah. $100,000 in San Francisco. That's right. impossible. Right, right. You know, or, or whatever the yeah, case, that's like whatever the case may be. Yeah, that's very, very frustrating. So they invert that, and I think that's why they're, they're doing like so they're, well. They thought the CarMax of, of job placements. Yeah. <laughs> the sticker but, price is what you're going to pay. I think he'd be happy with that now. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, just going back to some of your early history with, with Ruby on Rails, um, I'm just curious, you know, you've, you've written a number of books and an ongoing series and, and with a pro Ruby series. Um, how did you get started with, with teaching and, and being, because this seems to be a theme inside of the Ruby community is that yeah. people teach and they, they bring others up. How in the early days, did you get involved in, in publishing? I mean, I got pulled into it through through my activities in, in blogging, and I, I used to be someone who, who had a well-read blog in the Java world before I made the leap. And then once I, I got into to Ruby in, in 2005 and became a loud evangelist for it, it attracted a lot of attention. And, and back then, that world was a lot smaller, and it was a lot easier to get dialogues going and to... You know, you didn't have to get lucky with Hacker News in order for for everyone to read your stuff. Like, yeah. It was actually a lot easier to, to get heard. Yeah, I know about better the pain. signal and noise. <laughs> I know about the pain of, of getting people to to, to watch. <laughs> yeah, de definitely, it's a different it's a different world now. Um, but that said, quality content always wins, mm -hmm. and. Um, what, it's it's interesting to see the community reinvent itself and kind of renew itself. And what we're seeing here is always just like the little tip of the iceberg. Uh, granted, you know, when, when RailsConf started out, it was a really small iceberg. And the, the people on the tip, uh, you know, were those of us that were blogging and giving conference talks and stuff like that, and everyone knew each other. And it's funny to see how over the years, the, the community that's active in blogs and stuff like that, the, the characters change and they morph and they evolve and they go off into other areas but it stays kind of relatively the same size right. but what's been really amazing to watch um, you know partly for me the, looking at the royalty checks and the, yeah. the size that they're getting is how big the Rails community has gotten. I mean, yeah. just hit the mainstream in a, in a way that I think has exceeded our, our wildest dreams uh, yeah. in the early days. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's something that maybe those of us who are just participating in the community might not see, but being able to see, like, wow, the total numbers of people buying these books is, yeah. is, is growing. It does. It grow, It grows every year, and it, it just it goes. And then you see, you come to like this year's Rails Comp, and you see like you know how many people are hiring for Rails jobs and mm -hmm. who they are, and like. Um, company 
companies continuing to switch over from .NET and Java deployments and just redoing entire development departments, yeah, tearing infrastructure out and starting over, and it's 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 heartening to watch that the community keeps growing. So. Yeah, and now here on the other end of, of the spectrum of of your years of publishing. Uh, are you looking at uh, the change in the way books are published? I mean, in the early days, it would have been hard paperbacks yeah. um, and, and tomes, but now it seems like things are moving towards uh, ebooks. Is that something that you're experiencing or moving towards? Uh, it's still, you know, if, if you want to write a book, your best bet is to, to start by self publishing your ebook. But, uh, you know, keep, it, keep in mind that traditional publishers are happy to sign yeah. ebook authors, and a lot of times we'll just just take your ebook and you, and you know maybe with some editing or some you know or whatever publish it as a print book and uh, there is still a lot of value in being published with a prestigious publishing yeah. house like like Apple yeah, Wesley yeah. or Riley or Wiley uh, you know where you know it gives you credibility mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about yeah it, you know how to get that that people will have that automatic trust oh I know that publisher publishes good books exactly I'm gonna give this book a chance you know it really does wonders for your career I'm, I'm testament to, to that you know it's, it's once you get a book published uh, people start looking to you as, as an authority yeah well again thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me I really oh, appreciate my, it my pleasure thanks a lot thanks User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.